Last night I ended up here at the camping. I paid $19 for a uh, powered site. Charged my car in about uh, 15 hours or something. And uh, yeah, these are my, is one of my neighbors. Hello. Hello. They've been really nice. They gave me breakfast this morning and they gave me a huge uh, survival kit with uh, apples, bananas, and uh, pears, and rice, and I don't know what. So thanks a lot for that, for helping me out. Most welcome, we wish you well. Yeah, thank you. I had a super bad dream last night. I dreamt that I could not make it to the destination today, and that I had to get towed by a truck uh, to the community. And over there I could not charge my car and got stuck there for a few days until we found a solution. Today actually all that could happen. It's 288 kilometers to Fitzroy Crossing, so I'm not going there, but I will be staying in the Nagumpan community. Josh contacted me, he is a community worker over there, and he said, yeah, no worries mate, I will sort you out. It is exactly 201 kilometers from here, so I could make that, but I know I have to climb some hills today. So I might lose some range, so we'll have to see what happens. Driving in Australia is completely different as to Asia. In Asia it will take me almost all day to drive 200 kilometers because there are so many cars, people and motors on the streets. They would use their horns all the time and once I'd reached my destination I was completely grumpy because I'd seen so many people do weird things on the streets and all that horning would have driven me nuts. Here in Australia I drive 200 kilometers within 2 hours and I would only have seen a few cars. I can even do airplanes on the highway, a morning workout and a nap if I wanted to. As I dreamt last night, I didn't make it to the community. I drove 176 kilometers and I just have 4% battery left. When I stopped I had 2% but yeah, when you stop it, it goes, goes up a little bit. I was thinking like where should I stop the car and then at that point I drove past an array of, of solar panels. Uh, so I thought, hey, free power. So I went to have a look there, but there's a huge fence around it. And I didn't see any socket to plug it in. Um, so I gave a message to Josh. I'm very lucky that uh, in this area, in WA, there's coverage everywhere, even between towns. While in the Northern Territory, that was, yeah, you know, really, there was just no surface. So I could reach him. He is sending a friend over who is coming to pick me up. So I'm exactly 25 kilometers from, from the community. So he will be, be here soon. And uh, it's so beautiful here. Like here, b behind me, it's like as far as you can see, it's only uh, these termite mountains. Just let's have a uh, fly with a drone over here. It's amazing. All right, the problem is kind of solved. Uh, a friend of uh, Josh, his name is Sean, he picked me up. I think he also works at the community. And he's towing me now to the community. Just 18 kilometers left. And the uh, funny thing is, because I put the car in, uh, in drive mode, it's already recharging. I have now 6% battery while I started at 2. That's cool, eh? So 25 km later, and I have 27%. Reach starts. It's really nice, and we are now in an Aboriginal community. And uh, I cannot film yet because I need permission. But we are looking now to uh, to charge the remaining bit. Yeah, we arrived at the uh, Nungpang community. Nungpang. Nungpang, that's how I call it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you nice nice lady. Let me let me charge here. That's great. And then later we are going to your community, and that's about how many kilometers from here? Uh, 19. Come 19. On. So that's more yeah. in inland and a bit. Yeah, Not road. my community, but it's oh, yeah, okay. as well, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Luckily, lucky enough to live out there, eh? Right? Yeah. So. And it's full here with, with dogs and uh, cats who are Dog. trying to lick my, my feet continuously. <laughs> yeah. It's really cool. And uh, what is the Nungpa community? It's a good community? Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, yeah. it is a good one. Yeah. Uh, and you, you celebrate, you had a 
big week, huh? This week, Atmoik week or something? What's it called? Uh, Nidoc. Nidoc, Nidoc week. Yeah, Nidoc yeah. week. Yeah, so. It's it. Yeah. Did you uh, did you do anything special? No, not really. It, okay. Yeah, the school's doing a um, it, school's doing a big Nidoc um, celebration this week out at Wonga Jonka. So mm -hmm. all this community and all that will be invited up there. Um, yeah, to Wonga Jonka to do all their traditional yeah. stuff out there. Cool. Ah, oh, that it's cool because um, for a white fella, it's cool to learn all their culture and stuff, you know. So yeah, uh, it's big culture. So yeah. up here, it's okay. really good. So. I then drove with Sean 20 kilometers on gravel road to the community. At first we were planning to leave the blue bandit behind to charge, but when I saw the road was doable, we later decided to drive back and pick her up. This is the Wang Kachunka community, which consists of two parts. In the front the school and houses of the teachers, and in the back the residential area where the locals live. Hi right, Josh. Um, thanks a lot for inviting me here and no welcome problem. here. Yeah. Um, because I was really surprised because a few weeks ago, maybe months ago, I was doing research and thought how I'm going to get from Halls Creek to Fitzroy Crossing and I saw on the map there's this Aboriginal community and thought, hey, that might be a good spot, but how on earth am I going to find somebody there who can help <laughs> me out? But then you contacted me. Yes. So how did you find me? Um, I found you through Facebook. Uh, one of my friends lives on the Gibb River Road and uh, one of her friends forwarded your Facebook to her. We thought you were going down the Gibb River Road. Um, but when we found out you were coming down our way, down the, the main highway, that's when uh, I thought, yeah, it would be great to have you stay. I think it's great for our community and great for our school that you've come and met our kids and they've met you and had a look at your car. Um, so yeah, so for me, um, yeah, I just thought what a great opportunity to have something different happen for our community. Yeah, so uh, what is exa uh, exactly your, your, your role in the community? Um, so I'm the principal of Wonka Jonka Remote Community School. Yeah. Yep. Uh, can, you, can you tell me a little bit about the community, like how is life here, how many people live here, what, um, what's your activities yeah, here? Uh, in our school we have approximately 45 children, um, they come from four different communities, Wonka Jonka, Numpan, which is the one you saw up on the corner, um, Babaga, uh, where you went uh, yesterday, and uh, Gubadia, which is a bit further down where you conked out and ran out of power. Right. Um, um, our community itself, Wonka Jonka, it, it can have anywhere from a couple of hundred people to, you know, four, five, six hundred people at times, depending on what's happening. People are very, uh, Aboriginal people are very attached to their land and their home. Um, so for different cultural reasons, they might come home for, di for different things and our community will swell in numbers and our school swells in numbers. And then other times, uh, if there's, there's cultural reasons for them to be uh, with other family or on other country, they, they will head off. So Wonka Jonka people, uh, they're a tribe of people. The language they speak is Wonka Jonka. They're from the, the desert, which is uh, maybe 50 or 100 kilometers uh, south of us. They were pulled out of the, the, the Western desert to come for, um, I guess, Western services such as medicine and, and health and, uh, and food. Um, it's a very beautiful place. The people here are very, very kind people, uh, very happy people, very accepting people, as I'm sure you now know because uh, they, they were very warm and, and welcoming of you. Uh, yeah, I'm here at the Wanka Junka community. Do I pronounce that already? Pretty good. And uh, I'm here with Lee, who is the CEO of the community. And uh, yeah, Lee, can you, can you tell me in short? How, how is life on, on the Wonka Chunga? Life's system? terrific. It's paradise out here. Yeah. Absolutely paradise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. So how, how does uh, a, a normal, typical day? Normal, typical day mm -hmm. is just from 7 o'clock till who knows what hour. Yeah. And you do everything that's possible, everything that the, the community need for you, that you do their banking, you do all the paperwork, all the all the everyday life stuff I do, plus I have to raise the money to get the community going. I have to spend the money so that it's felt spent wisely. I have to keep all the boys employed. Um, we make concrete, we have trucks and um, lots of things from tyre shops and, stuff yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. And are you employed by the, by the government? By the, no, I'm employed by the community. By the community? By the community, yes. Okay, and yeah. So I have to make my own pay, so to speak. All right. Yes. 
so it's a bit of a battle. Okay. Um, but we do lots of work, lots of good work. For, yeah. We make concrete, we've got a couple of batching plants and uh, concrete trucks and dip okay. trucks and so it keeps us busy. Yeah. All right. Hey, and um, yeah, I'm I'm doing this trip because I want to know like in other countries where I come, like how how do they think about sustainability and how do they incorporate that? And is is an Aboriginal community? Uh, do they talk about sustainability? Are no, you doing anything no, no. to make this sustainable? The only way the only way we can survive is to get off our house and go to work. Go right. to work because the federal government do give money to the communities, but they they seem to favour people or communities that get up and try and stand up on their own two feet. So we've got nearly enough infrastructure on the ground that we can stand up by ourselves. Um, that's probably 12 months down the track, but we're getting closer. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's my succession plan, is to get that up and running so that I can then go home and spend some time with my grandkids. We we have two tips, two municipal tips. We take all the rubbish down there and yeah. with a big load to push it all in when it's at the front. Building. And do the, the, the community, the people who live here, they, they throw everything in, in the bins? Yes. Or, yeah. Oh, I drop it on the ground mostly, but... On the ground? Oh, mostly, yeah. 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 Um, so there's some nice people, as I'll see a lady over near the shop now raking up some rubbish and stuff, and some nice yeah. people. So would you say that they're not really uh, aware of the impact they have? Like no. On the, no. No, they're not. Why, why is it not? Oh, it's just, it's part of the education that hasn't happened, you know, like, it's a huge transition from living in a in a, a bark hut to living in a, a, a white man's house and white man's habits and white man's yeah. habits to keep it clean and in the old days they would set up a camp and when it got a bit dirty they'd mm -hmm. make it, go to a new one so what, what do you think about electric car <laughs> electric car yeah i reckon it's a world changing yeah um vehicle um tool why is that um environmentally friendly doesn't um Give up, give off fumes, bad fumes like our petrol cars, diesel cars. Yeah. This electrical one is good for the environment. You find it's very important? That it's uh, important. Yeah. You know, to keep the world clean, the planet clean. Mm -hmm. uh, and here in the, in the community, do you try to also and, uh, not to pollute? We, for living out in remote areas, remote yeah. areas we, we have issues with fuel. Yeah. yeah bringing fuel out here and um, and the cost of fuel. Right. The cost. Yeah. Uh, it it's costs high. the government so much money and us. Everyone you know, paying for fuel is too much. Yeah. This way is cheaper. Uh, but do you also find like other aspects important, like maybe waste or water, or how you heat or your house do you think about that when when that, uh, about the environment yeah that as well like, we waste so much fuel yeah using electricity you know diesel yeah diesel powered um, okay. electricity but yeah if we use a sun and um like yours battery yeah big batteries big battery yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll cool, yeah. so you think your next car will be an electric car yes yeah well, i want to get one yeah the whole cool. Community should yeah. invest in electric cars. Yeah, but I'll get one too cool. for sure. All right. And um, uh, yeah, we are now about 20 km from the highway. Correct. Yesterday we went to the nearest supermarket, which yes. was 110 yeah, kilometers from 110 here. 110 for our nearest supermarket <laughs> and our post office and uh, a place where we, uh, not like you, a place where we get diesel and, and unleaded. Yeah. Yeah. So just a short trip away. Um, we do have a very small store here, but. Uh, it, it it maybe doesn't have as much stuff as there is in IGA that's that's at Fitzroy Crossing and and yeah. sometimes maybe the prices that they uh, yeah so what are, what are the challenges of of living so remote um, well when you're surrounded by good people the the challenges are less and less but. Uh, uh, I guess some of the challenges, isolation away from your family. Um, we're a long way, Sarah and myself, from our families and, and different things happen. People might pass away or there might be some family emergencies and you can't always make it home. <laughs>
uh, Aboriginals and also saw how they how they live. And uh, yeah, for me it was, uh, it was very meaningful. So on to the next adventure.